Welcome back, everybody. Here we are once again for the Some Low Grade Gamers podcast. I am your host. Am I? No. I think we're all equal part hosts. <laughs> You're one third of the host. Yeah, I am one third of the host. My name is Tom from Some Kind of Gaming. We also have the beautiful Dan over here. How are you doing, Dan? Good, good. How are we all? <laughs> Fantastic, thank you. Fantastic. And then we have the equally as beautiful Laura over here. How are you doing, Laura? I'm doing good. How are you doing? They both waved for you guys who are like actually listening to this. So oh yeah. Sometimes yeah. I forget it. I do yeah. motions and then I need to work on my um sound fix again. Yeah, yeah you do. Yeah, you, you gotta make sure you do for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> A wavy sound effect. What is a waving sound effect? Oh. Cool. Let's let's go with that. <laughs> oh, what a laugh. All right. This week we've got a couple of uh, interesting things to go over. Uh, just like every year, seemingly, there is another Nintendo Switch 2 leak. It's just as I thought, everyone. There is going to be a Nintendo Switch 2. I knew it. I had it. I'm, I'm the leaker. There will be one day a sequel to the Switch. Well, to be honest, that leak is as verifiable as most. Yes. <laughs> but the one we're going to discuss is a little bit yes. more than that. Uh, it is a just, little more sub- substantial. It's not just me on Twitter saying it's going to be released in 2022, 2023, 2024, 2025, or 2026, maybe. Well, I think that it's like, of course, there's going to be a Switch too. At yeah. some point. Yeah, that's the... But I want the receipts. Yes, exactly. We need more information than that, don't we? Mm-hmm. We're also going to discuss... Uh, it's a little bit of an Australian-focused issue, but there is a certain game that has been refused classification over here in Australia. And I guess we'll talk about classifications and ratings of games in general because we all know Sony is very good at cutting things out of games to release them as, I don't know, PG as opposed to something that might be 18, 18 plus, or even just taking things out of games because it's just too intense full stop. So we will be talking about the board of classification a little bit. It is quite interesting. And then we've got a couple of uh, little ones near the end, but um, there's a God of War movie on the or TV show on the cards, which is quite interesting. Got a couple of ideas who might be acting in that. So that is, uh, yes, yeah, it's going to be quite interesting, I think. So let's kick things off with the Switch 2 League. That's the big one of the day, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So, Dan, would you like to go over exactly what this leak entails and how it is more credible than my personal leak? (laughs) So, there's a couple of things here that I think not only myself but other analysts actually think this is more credible. I'm not trying to claim anything here. Uh, A lot of my stuff is reading what other analysts read and putting two and two together myself. Uh, I do have a couple of theories, though. So I don't Ooh. think it'll be called a Switch well, Pro. Pat theories? No. I just, I, on here. I do not see Switch Pro in the horizon. I don't think they'll call it that. I don't think they've got I any think... interest in calling it a Switch Pro. I agree. What about if we take the NES and the SNES approach? So Super Nintendo Entertainment System, Super Switch, maybe. I like that. It's, it's got a nice ring to it, bit does. of alliteration. Yeah. Yeah, it could be. I think it'll be something along the lines of Switch U or Switch R. Oh, oh yeah. No. no. <laughs> I, think, I yeah. feel like they get it off on a bad foot immediately. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I think I, I sort of want to. I, I got a feeling they're just going to chuck a letter on the end. That's. that's yeah. That's or like Switch 4K, some bullshit like that. I think I, I that's what I perceive actually happening. I don't think, yeah, I think the Switch OLED is potentially a test for that screen that they've been using, yeah. you know, verifying what the best sort of application is handheld wise. So I think the OLED is potentially a beta testing console in some yep. respects. So 
that's sort of what I, I mean. Look, it's overdue by this by this point. You've got the switch, yeah, absolutely. then you've got the switch v2 Listen. version two, which did have some yep. minor changes. Uh, switch light, which I don't really count, and the switch yeah. OLED. So, yep. I, I think it's so overdue. I think in, in regards to that overdue, I just want to say that I, the switch is still outselling everything everywhere, and whether that be because you know the PlayStation Five and the Xbox Series of systems are largely unavailable at the moment, um, they, they are harder to get your hands on than it is a Switch. But the, despite all that, the Switch is still destroying them in almost every market in the world. So, I mean, it's the same same deal with the new Mario Kart game. Nintendo's like, well, the, this Mario Kart is selling still, so what, we don't really need a new one, you know. Uh, I think that's the same idea with the switch. If it was, if the sales had dropped significantly, I think we might have seen one this year, last year, but it's still going strong. So mm-hmm. I guess they'll wait for that to peter out. Yeah. So what do we so, think? Do we think that they are going to be making a switch two mm-hmm. or a whole new thing? No, well, it, it's really- going to be a whole thing in regards to how the ps5 is a whole new thing compared to the ps4 mm. like it's not going to be a revision of the switch it yeah. will be but i think that but that's a very good point do you think they'll keep the name switch yeah or is it going to be another like the next step so nintendo 64 I, yeah, nintendo I, I think the switch, exactly. the switch is selling uh, far too well to make any significant changes and when i say i think it's overdue What I mean by that is I think the games that they're trying to put out are exceeding what the console is capable of. And what I mean by I think Arceus is a perfect... What's that? There is a couple. We're starting... We're just starting to get into that territory. sort of where my thought pattern is. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. I wouldn't say we're quite there necessarily with everything. Um, Ports are still possible. Look at The Witcher Three, for example. It's it runs quite well. Mm. It doesn't look as pretty, that's for yeah. sure. But it that, does run. That though, thing so. runs surprisingly well, uh, and that's that's a big game. But yeah. yes, I agree with you, Dan. Legends Arceus is one, and Hyrule Warriors: Age of Calamity that's is another one. Another, and neither of, especially Hyrule Warriors, it's not unplayable. It does just drop frames. Like crazy. Considerably. But the Warriors games are known to do that on Nintendo consoles. Well, there's so much yeah, going on in those so games. So much going on, yeah, 100%. Sorry, Dan, back. What, what were you? What yeah, were you I just, I, I, I'm more thinking along those lines of that's why I think it's overdue. I think the yeah. graphics are now being left behind too much. Even if you play a Series X on, even just on 1080 versus a mm-hmm. Switch on 1080. The, the Series X still has a huge advantage. Now, again, Nintendo aren't trying to fight in that space, but mm-hmm. I think they need to attempt to not necessarily close the gap, but keep the gap where it is. I think. Yes, I agree. I, I, you know, because as far as I see it, I don't see the Switch as a main console, if that make sense in anybody's household like some people might and that's and that's fine but i i think the switch has a sweet spot where it can be the main console or it can be the supplemental console and i think that's why it sells so well as well it's not like a series x and a playstation 5 where you know you have to you know you want both or you know it's a whole big thing whereas just picking up a switch and just playing the switch number one you get First party titles that you're not going to get, you will never get anywhere else, not even a Steam release like Sony mm-hmm. have been doing with uh, Horizon Zero Dawn and the God of War series, and hopefully Horizon uh, Forbidden West, etc. But if we have a look at what Nintendo do, Nintendo keep their IP as Nintendo. They don't give a shit. They don't want to share that with yeah. anybody. So I think the Switch is a perfect supplemental console, but if it doesn't keep the gap where it is and the gap keeps growing, and I think the gap potentially would have grown significantly if the Series X and the PlayStation 5 were a lot more accessible. I think if those consoles were significantly more accessible, 
I reckon Nintendo would have moved their release date potentially a year earlier. I, I got a feeling mm-hmm. we're looking at a 2023 release based on, so the, the leak basically came out of NVIDIA. Now it looks yes. like NVIDIA I are working probably get on. A book. <laughs> yeah. That's actually what leak is. Yeah, that yeah. is a, instead of spec, it's not just I like me. it. Uh, no. Yes, this leak actually came out of NVIDIA, which was actually talking about a DLSS powered switch. Now, to keep it really simple, as some people are interested in the tech side, some people aren't, but I'm not going to yep. go into a huge detail. Basically, what it is, is it's a specific artificial intelligence which allows a significant improvement in graphics without frame rate drops as well. It can basically navigate easier those. Uh, upscaling, I guess you want to you want to call it uh, activities, and it does a significantly better job than anything currently available. Now, mm-hmm. right now, if that was to release, which it's not going to, but if the switch was going to release tomorrow, I don't think that is necessarily ready. And I think we would the see technology. More, yeah, I, I I think we're going to see this next year. It's, I, yeah, I highly doubt it'll come this year. I think it'll be a next year sort of thing. I would, mm-hmm. and sort of there's a few things that I, the reasons that I think that. I think we've got Arceus again, which has frame rate drops and other issues, which would, I, I believe, largely be resolved if we had the opportunity to actually run DLSS. Uh, I'm just going to call it DL from now on because it's easier. So Fine. If, if we had DL, I think Arceus would run a lot better and, and so would a lot of other games. Now, you look at what they're releasing shortly. We've got uh, the new Pokemon games, which are coming out in late 2022, which is this year, which are full mm-hmm. open world. And they've reiterated that again on Facebook, I think, today. They've mm-hmm. spoken about a real open world experience. So I, I think the fact, and I think you put it really well last week, Tom, I think it was, they haven't, they never pitched Arceus or, or anything like that. People just said it was open world, right? They never pitched it yeah. as that. I think people were hoping it. Yes, yes, willing it into existence. Yeah. So I, I think this time, uh, so a new evolutionary step in the Pokemon series in Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet You'll be able to freely explore a rich open world, a world filled with towns and cities that blend seamlessly into the wilderness with no borders. That is exactly what the Nintendo Switch uh, Facebook page, for those that still use Facebook, it's still a thing, it's there. Um, I, I think that's where I'm starting. That's why I'm starting to think that this console is potentially the, I'm going to call it the Switch 4K. And if I'm right for the future, I'm going to be a happy man. But <laughs> if if we look at what's coming, I mean, you've got Breath of the Wild 2, which I know we talk about a lot and everybody talks about Breath of the Wild 2. But if they're going to improve on the original Breath of the Wild, which was already fantastic on already a standout game, how are they going to do it without the performance gains needed? That's my Sorry. that's my thought. Along with because open world is yeah, look uh, okay. This is going to be very not blunt but generalist. Okay, open world is not that hard to achieve on a small scale, mm-hmm. developmental wise, because you can add in certain bits and pieces and, and all that sort of stuff. This is verified by a game developer, not some weirdo like me. Uh, I've, I've spoken to a few game developers about how this works and why Arceus didn't fit that narrative. So on a smaller scale, it's definitely possible, which we've seen, I think, in Pokemon Sword and Shield. That was the DLC was close, um, mm-hmm. not super close, but that's that's what I think the Switch is I able to achieve. I don't think it can yeah. achieve much beyond that without the performance upgrades that it it needs to to hit those that number one the frame rates and we really need to see 4k coming out of that switch i think 4k is on yeah, now 
Yeah, yeah, no, it is. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, especially with the PlayStation Five, capable of like eight K. Uh, people affectionately refer to it as. So I agree with you, but I also disagree with you. I think. Well, first of all, Breath of the Wild is far more open world than anything Pokemon has done. Oh, yeah, 100%. Don't get me wrong. I wasn't trying to compare the two. No. <laughs> so it is capable of open worlds. But that, keeping on the Breath of the Wilds line, if they, if Nintendo plan on releasing Breath of the Wild this year still, and we don't have any reason to believe that they're not planning on doing it, they are going to roll with that for a while. They are going to want that game available on their console of choice for at least a year before they release anything new. Any new games? Any new systems. Do you see what I'm saying? Yeah, I see what you're saying. So they're not going to release Breath of the Wild 2 on the Switch and then make it redundant by releasing a Switch 4K six months later. I think if they made a a Switch, you'd be able to play Breath of the Wild 2 on it. Yes, no, you would. But it's going to be a system seller. Breath of the Wild 2 is going to be a system seller for the Switch. Okay, I see. They're going to want to roll with that. Yeah. Especially with their lineup of games that is coming out this year. It's the best year for Switch ever, hands down. Splatoon 3, Xenoblade Chronicles 3, new Pokemon uh, generation. We've discussed that already. Breath of the Wilds 2, Bayonetta 3, all these huge Nintendo IPs are releasing this year. They're all system sellers. Mm -hmm. They're going to sell more Switches. So why would they release a Switch 2 so or a Switch 4K, as apparently we're calling it now? Why are they going to release that so soon after all these system seller games come out. I just don't see them doing that. Well, I they did think it with Breath of the Wild. Going to see. So Breath of the Wild was a, a generation gap in game. So it released simultaneously on the Wii U and the Switch. Uh, they, they could do that, but that's again... I, that's that's like, what I'm saying. Then, I'm envisioning... As you said, Dan, like you, you think Breath of the Wild 2 is still releasing at the end of this year. They would be, they would be hyping up this new console, and it's not just Breath of the Wild too. It's the new Pokemon generation, uh, which don't like to cross console generations. I was seeing it before uh, new generations of Pokemon releasing quite late in uh, a system's life cycle, and then not coming to the new one, and. Again, Splatoon 3, Xenoblade, Bayonetta, all these big titles, not just Breath of the Wild 2. They're not, they're not gonna put, they're not gonna make them all generation crossing games. They're just not. And if Breath of the Wild 2 is still coming out in 2022, again, we're just gonna assume it is because we have no reason not to. Like that that then proves yourself wrong, Dan, if you think this system is gonna come out in 2023. Like if 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 Breath of the Wild 2 is going to be that cross-gen title, it's it's being dropped simultaneously. Same day, then and there, it's coming out with the new system. See, and I, I just don't see that happening if it's going to be released this year. I, I think, think we will go, see the new Switch in 2024. See, I, I think it'll be mid to late 2023 from the point of view of planned obsolescence. I think what it'll do is, yes, Breath of the Wild 2 is going to work on the current Switch, but if you bought the Switch 4K, you're going to see significant improvements. And we saw it with the Switch OLED. People quickly changed over to the Switch OLED for no significant gain. So the Switch OLED was is good, right? Don't get me wrong. If you were to purchase a Switch today, you should purchase the Switch OLED. Don't don't get the yes. other one, especially if you play in handheld. But if you don't play yeah, in handheld, upgrade in handheld mode. What's significant. that? It's a significant upgrade if you were to play in handheld mode. In terms of the way it looks, 
Yeah, mm-hmm. and sounds. But there's no the, st- significant. Thing are far better. There's no significant performance increases. Is no, where no, I'm, no, I'm no, sort no, of getting. No, yeah. There's so my thought pattern around this is it's sort of how when Apple release a new software update that tends to slow phones down. Now they've admitted to that. They know they do that. And they apparently do that so batteries last longer. Now, I don't know if that's entirely true, but potentially it is. Now, I think with the Switch 4K, I think you're right, Breath of the Wild is uh, 2 is going to be a system seller and potentially the new Pokemon is as well. But you hype people up for Breath of the Wild and then bring out the 4K version, say six months to a year later, and I guarantee you those same people that bought Breath of the Wild 2 for the Switch, because I'm not saying that the Switch 4K is going to be a, a generation gap, I think is the wrong way to think about it. I think it's more like, say, the difference between the original Xbox One to the Xbox One X. Now, I said One X, not Series oh, X, people. Okay. So that's, that's interesting. That's, that that's what I think, yeah, we're going to see. And that's why I think it'll be that release because I don't think it's going to be a next gen for the Switch. I think it's going to be a hyped up gen because DLSS isn't going to do that much that it's a next generation thing, in my opinion. Now, somebody more technical yeah, this than is just one thing I think it's, I think Nintendo is looking at that next gen console and they want it and they need it to keep up with things like the PlayStation five. And as you said, to, to close that gap or at least keep it where it was with the switch compared to the PlayStation four pro, for example. But I don't see them putting so much effort into a system that they're not looking at as the next system. So when you're comparing it to the Xbox One and the Xbox One X, I'm thinking something like maybe not as, definitely not as drastic as the 64 to the GameCube, but something like that. Maybe maybe they're going to put a new gimmick in it like we saw from the GameCube to the Wii or the Wii to the Wii U, but I don't think they're going to try and market it as the pro model because despite them not marketing the Wii U as the pro model, that's what people thought of the Wii U as. Uh, That's what I thought the Wii U was for the longest time. I just thought it was like an upgraded Wii. And I feel like that's what the general public thought. And that didn't work. It didn't work. So it was just a shit console though. Yeah, yeah. Uh, There's some great games on it. I think it'll still very much be a Switch. Yeah. Yeah, the Switch, like, 4K or whatever it could possibly be switched to. I still think the next thing that they're going to come out with, it's still going to be a Switch. I don't think it's going to have a new crazy name. No. It'll it'll be a Switch something. That's, that's what I think. Because you're right. Like, they are still selling so many Switches. And so why would they just completely go with something totally different when what they have is working so well. I I think that they will make a better version of a Switch, and I think that you're still going to be able to play the games that are coming out on the Switch now. I think you're still going to be able to play them on it. It, They'll just run and operate way better, but I don't think there's going to be any games that you won't be able, any Switch games that you won't be able to play on the new one. So yeah, that's that's my so thought as well. All the games they're going to release after this 4K model are going to be playable on the old Switch, our current Switch. For, for um, a I don't know if that would necessarily, yeah, probably at the beginning, but I don't think there's going to be any of the old Switch games that it will be unplayable on the new. Switch. No, no, it will be backwards compatible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's so. Um, and, and just Obvious. more to this In point, point as you said, sold so many, it has, it has to be backwards compared. Yeah. Um, it won't be like the Switch compared to the D. They, the Switch was very much a reset, not backwards compatible with the Wii. 
yeah. the Wii U not backwards compatible with the 3DS. That was a yeah, yeah, exactly was a whole new thing. thing. But I, I think, think to Laura's point, like, if you if yeah, you have a look at the 3D. dock for the oh, sorry, if you have a look at the dock for the OLED, I just want to finish on Laura's point. Yeah, if you look at the Switch dock for the OLED model, that is a significant upgrade. That's that's the big upgrade is that dock in terms of you've got inbuilt Ethernet, you've got other uh, critical factors, including the fact like, that, what's that? That's like it. It has other, like it's, isn't the dock for the Switch OLED like compatible with 4K? Isn't yes. that another upgrade? That's there? exactly it my point. Updated. It's updatable to 4K. So if they yeah, continue reason for that. down this road, potentially, people with OLEDs, because remember, one of the big criticisms was what the hell is the point of upgrading to the OLED if I play handheld, as an example. And I think this speaks to the point of the you OLED. Uh, yeah, if you don't, sorry. It, I think this speaks to the point of the OLED being a beta, if that makes sense, because they're testing that dock. If they can get that dock to do X, Y, and Z, potentially, You've got an option in the future because at the moment I think the switch market is too is they got too much crap out there. They need to remove the older switches, get rid of them, and just keep the OLED and do something a little bit nicer with the light. But what I think the for what I think the OLED is going to end up being is I think that dock is going to be upgradable and potentially you can buy a switch without the dock. That's where I think is potentially the next thing. So if you've got an OLED, then sure, you can just buy the switch. You don't need to buy the switch and the dock. It removes the light, right? I think it will remove the light from the equation. It'll mean that there's a cheaper model because they don't need to include the dock. Or you can buy the model with the dock, get the upgraded thing. Does that make sense? Does what I said just make sense? So instead of having three different models, it does, it does make sense. But I don't. I don't personally see Nintendo doing that. Uh, just as a quick comparison, there is a telecommunications company here in Australia called Telstra, and they, if you get internet service with Telstra, you have to get a home phone connection because they can charge more. Because you have that home phone, despite nobody I know using a home phone still. Do you still use a home phone? If you do, yeah, I don't know if it's worth it. But they still sell you that package because they can charge more for it. So I just think maybe Nintendo is going to do the same thing. I don't see them bringing out a cheaper model without the dock because they can charge more for it with the dock. True. I do see where you're coming from. Yeah. With that, yeah, I guess, yeah, that the does make sense. Is, then you've got two dots. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. fine. But so, then you've bought two docks from them. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's interesting this conversation we're having because I very much see this, this next Switch model as that generational leap. I see it as, you know, the... Uh, Game Boy to the DS or the DS to the 3DS more more likely, I think. Uh, you know, there's there's different game cartridges that uh, it will be backwards compatible, but, you know, you're not, you're not going to be able to play the new games on your old Switch. It's going to be a new thing entirely. Might have a new gimmick, maybe something small like the 3DS did, just a small new gimmick there. Mm -hmm. uh, we all know Nintendo loves their gimmicks. Whereas Dan is very much in the mindset of it's just an upgrade to the old Switch. You know, it's going to be the PS4 Pro. It's going to be the Switch Pro. Uh, Laura, are you in the middle ground here? I, I feel I'm getting those vibes. Well, I think it's going to be like, I don't think it's going to be an entirely new. I don't know if it's going to be an entirely new system, but I think it's going to be a little bit more than just like a Pro. So I guess I am in the middle. Yeah, I guess I am in the middle. Yeah, the classic Laura being very indecisive. Yeah. <laughs> no, well, I think that. Yeah, I do think that you're going to be able to play all of the old Switch games on the new yeah. Switch. Yeah. I think it's going to yeah, have. Agree. I don't, yeah. but it's still going to be a Switch. Yeah. That's what I think. So, so I guess I it's am... going to be like. 
hardcore pro version. If a I am wrong, pro. I will personally give away to one listener the latest Steam game at that time. If I'm wrong. All right. All uh, right. Well, uh, the st- what are you offering if you're wrong? I, I'm Switzerland, so. I will. Oh, I was going to say I'd let Dan punch me, but I think you've just done martial arts. Um, yeah, true. I, that's, high, that's high stakes. Yeah, that is high stakes. Yeah, maybe. I, I want to live. I'm not willing to bet my life on this. Uh, I don't know. I will take a slap from Laura live on our stream. Oh. I'll give you 10 slaps. 10, ten slaps. slaps. I feel like oh, 10 this is epic. Oh. Yeah, yes. I thought he was just going to go with one slap. Nah, yeah. I had to up the stakes. I, I feel like 10 slaps from you is a lot better than one punch from Dan. So I'm okay. still going the lesser of two evils. Here. Yeah, I think Yeah, I think that I'm going to be doing some slapping because yeah. I still think that this next generation thing, well, the, the next thing that's coming along that's in the works at the moment, it's going to be a switch. I'm it's not, not going to be a new... I'm not saying it's not going to be a switch. No. I just... They I are like the they're sticking with the hybrid model. As well, the hybrid the model works, you know, like it's it is gonna be at its heart a switch, but it is going to be a generational leap. They have to. They, it's they can't just continue with this this generation for 20 years. Like there is gonna be a successor. This is going to be yeah, the there, there successor. Is, oh, there is certainly yeah. gonna be a switch successor, but I don't think that we're gonna see that anytime soon because as you said before, mm. why would they do that? The Switch is just doing so amazing. It's smashing all of the sales. There's all these incredible games coming out. I don't think that they're just going to next year pack up and then be like, okay, cool, we're doing this other thing now. It won't release next year. Yeah, you reckon uh, 2024. I reckon 2024, maybe around March. Even 2024, their sales are just too good. All they need to do is do a bump in performance and a bump in graphics and they're just going to keep selling for the next seven years. So yeah. I think I do think we let the viewers decide because I think otherwise we are biased. So yeah. unless, it's, well, I'm, I'm, unless I'm there's a clear wins. distinction, right, <laughs> unless there's a significantly yeah, clear like distinction, pretty. if we are on well, the fence, if we are on the fence, wants to slap. the listeners yeah. get to decide whether or not somebody gets a free game, which we will run yeah. uh, properly, we'll that'll be uh, you go into a draw blah 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 it'll be randomly generated or yeah. tom receives 10 slaps to the face mm-hmm. by Laura. both good options just saying mm-hmm. just saying so try not to be biased free games are good too guys just just keep that in mind <laughs> no. i think i think i better start preparing my slapping yeah. hands <clears throat> mm-hmm. yeah callous those puppies up a callous little bit. them up yeah, yeah so <laughs> that we we dived a little bit into our tinfoil hat theories here and what we think is going to happen. But the point is there is going to be a successor to the Switch. Nintendo is going to be doing something. They're, they're, like, it was obvious, guys. Like, come on. It, it was always going to happen. Something I do, was I do think come this leak is very credible as well. Versus- yes, that, that is the critical point, though. Yeah, versus there is, the past ones. It's quite credible. It actually... That uh, Nvidia got data mined. It's just all this stems from Dan the DSLL technology that is was obviously in this data mine. But it all stems from a little sentence that says NVN N two two two, and the, so the original switch was always referred to as NVN, and this is NVN two. So not NVN 4K, I might just point out quickly. That's too uh, obvious. <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, so that's literally we've just been banging on for like half an hour about one NVN to mention in uh, a mine. So, it, but the internet's rolling with it and that's fine. I, I think it is exciting and there will be something eventually in the future. We will decide when that happens, if I will be Who's closer, mm, yeah. Exactly. All right. Anything else you guys want to say? I think we wrap that up pretty I well. Think, yes, yeah, I, I think agree. that's wrapped up. I reckon we move on to RimWorld. Mm-hmm. Yes, we will. We will move on. So 
I uh, talked a little bit at the start about the classification of video games, you know, just like movies and music, explicitary content obviously has to uh, be dealt with, I guess you would like to say. And the Australian Board of Classification, I believe that is its official name. I believe the official decided- name is the Nanny Classifications. Yeah, yeah, we're living in a bit of a nanny state over here, everyone. (laughs) But, uh, yeah, so they have deemed a game unplayable, I guess. It is too intense for anybody to play. I am just going to read out exactly what they classification. Yeah, Mm. so the interesting thing about this is classifications usually apply to physical games. Uh, They're more, so obviously everything is classified, but physical games is where this board starts to really put their foot down and be like, no, Nanny says you can't play this. And I'll get into that in a second. Just let me read what the board said about RimWorld, which has been out since 2013. The computer the computer game is cla- oh computer game. Well, I haven't heard that, that term since mum told it to me when I was five. Get off those computer games. The computer game is classified RC in accordance with the National Classification Code, Computer Games Table 1A, as computer games that open quotation marks, depict, express, or otherwise deal with matters of sex, drug misuse or addiction, crime cruelty, violence, or revolting or abhorrent phenomena in such a way that they offend against the standards of morality, decency, and proprietary generally accepted by reasonable adults to the extent that they should not be classified. End quotation marks. (laughs) That's pretty intense. That... We apparently anybody who is willing to try this game is not a reasonable adult. This is this is just more bullshit. To be quite to be quite frank, like this game to- has been playable in Australia on Steam since 2013. And yes. now because there was a potential console release, I believe, is was yes, the exactly thing. that's where I was, that's where I wanted to get into that. Uh, so yeah. it's flown under the radar on Steam since 2013, and yep. now since it was going to be released physically, they're like, actually, yep. no. I think that anybody who plays this game is going to be corrupted, yes. and yep. society is a have they, apart. Have yeah. they played Grand Theft Auto for God's sake? Like Jesus. Uh, yeah, right. Just Grim on Gold that is- note, physical console version has not been officially announced or anything. No, we it's just speculation, but we, us as some low grade gamers, as the team here, do think that the classification board has now leaked the physical slash console version. That's yeah, the, that's the only quickly... thing that makes sense, unless yep. unless mm-hmm. there is a Karen out there that uh, has some people in high places. I guess if you want to call nanny classification high places. That's that's the only other thing that that could make any sense. Unfortunately, we've removed it from our digital games at this point, so yeah. we did have RimWorld available. Now, I'm not trying to aid the government in their removal of things, but what has been happening online? Just to put this out there, many people are saying that if you purchase RimWorld from an external source and not Steam you can still activate it in Australia. Now, a lot of people haven't heard of RimWorld, so a lot of people are trying this. Now, we tested that. I tested that in-house to see if that works. It does not work, so we have removed it from the website until further notice, only because I don't want people attempting this stuff because we can't give a refund on a game that you've attempted to do. That's just, once you've got a code, you can use it. I can't do anything about it. I can't expire the code. So we've removed it from for just until, I guess, those sort of things get ironed out. We'll bring it back. But uh, until that gets ironed out and that misinformation isn't out there, I didn't want, even if I write it in big red writing, guarantee you somebody's going to do it anyway, not yeah. to 
try and be rude, but that's what people do. Oh, no, of course. Even, but, yeah. Even people we, we uh, as an example, many games are not available in Germany or Japan because they depict World yes. War II and other bits and pieces. I have in big red writing, this game is not available in Germany or Japan. And yet we have had some Germans attempt to purchase these games, uh, which is actually why we're pulled out of the European market at this point in time. It's oh. mainly because of, of those sorts of things that continue to happen and then them wanting a refund. Now, you didn't read mm -hmm. the big red writing. That's not my problem because I can't do anything with that game after you, you want your refund, then you can still go use the code and be a wanker. So yep. that's that's why we have decided to remove the game temporarily uh, until we can get it to the point where you click on the game and it says, you're in Australia, no go, which yes. is uh, not something that we actually have implemented at this point in time, but it is is coming. So what, what are your... Thoughts. I'm going to start with Laura on this one, not to be rude, but I know Tom has something to say. But I oh, have something to say, mate. You know me. I always have an opinion. Yeah, well, I don't blame well, you. I, I do think that it's... <laughs> <laughs> it's like Switzerland. How are you doing over there? I think it's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> So I, I honestly think it's kind of ridiculous. The game has been available since 2013. Yeah. Like that's. That's a long time. That's almost 10 years yep. <laughs> that the game has been available. And only now they've decided that it's just, I don't know, like too, too bad. Like what, what is going to happen if people play this game? It just, I've never played it. Have you no. guys played it? No, no, but I really want to now. And now I can't. It's like telling me not to push a big red button. Exactly. I'm going to hit the kill switch. I've read this statement and I'm like, I want to play this game now. Yeah. What is so, what is so bad about RimWorld? I mean, like, like violence, <laughs> cruelty. Sex, drugs, rock and roll. I mean, that's it goes right back up to my what, alley. It goes back to what Dan was saying. Like, have they not played Grand Theft Auto? Yes. Like, what? The, this statement could fit into any game. Do they, so do I, they violence, play these games? I'd love to know. Violence. I'd love to violence know, classification-wise, what the yep. fuck they do. Sorry, I'm not meant to swear. I'm going to have to beat that out. Yep. I'll look at that. It's okay. But what, what do they do in classification? Surely, like, what, what, I don't get it. I, I'm so confused about yeah. a game that I, is. How do they decide on these things? Yeah. I agree. I think, well, GTA is, it sells a lot and Rockstar are a huge company. That's never going to get pulled. It's just, it's just not going to happen. Uh, RimWorld is released by a smaller developer, so therefore they get, Shat on, for lack of a better term. Uh, Laura, just back to what you were saying, I believe, now, don't hold this as gospel, but I believe the drugs aspect is a recent update, somewhat recently. Not yesterday or last week or anything like that, but it is a relatively recent addition. To RimWorld or the, to, or the statement? To RimWorld. To RimWorld, okay. Yes. So okay, is that what, yeah, that's, what is RimWorld about? So In RimWorld, 5, okay, though, for those of you who don't know, sorry. What, all I'm saying, on the drug thing, in GTA 5. No, what's, yeah, I know, dude. What's I the know. kid's name? What's, what's. I know. James, oh. Jeremy, stupid kid. I don't know, mate. That's, Michael's I haven't kid played that any drugs him and yeah. you walk around and get probed by aliens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, dude, I, I know. Again, big company. So RimWorld is basically, Laura, I think you would really like it, actually. It's like one of those um, you play as God simulator type games. Okay. And you are on a, a planet and basically the end game is either you escape the planet or everyone in your colony dies. And you basically just get to... Uh, mess with people's lives uh there is updates you can bring a religious leader in and have your colony become a bunch of religious zealots you can 
you have to monitor stuff like sex and crime and all that jazz. Um, there is, which is where all the abhorrent phenomena comes into it, I guess. It's a real life. Essentially, it's a real life simulator. Like, I'm sorry, but these things exist in real life. As as sad as it might be, it's that it they just happen. And there's a lot worse things that happen as well. So, yeah, that's that's the type of game it is. It is, it is very much like a sim. It's I a guess. life sim, a god sim. Yeah, god yeah. Simulator. I mean, that, I'm putting it very basically. There's a lot more to it than that. But yeah, essentially, you control a group of people. You control a colony of. You're a cult leader. Human, humans. Well, mm, <sighs> or you could be a cult leader if you chose to play the game in that way. Yes. Yes, you could. Yep. 100%. Yep. So, and that's where I guess you're not playing as an individual character who is experiencing these things. Like you are making the characters in the game experience these things because of your choices. I don't know if that has an impact on how they choose to rate stuff. Honestly, I think they just put blindfolds on and go, oh, that one. Hmm. I don't like that one. And then it gets declassified and taken off Steam, which is a little bit of an unprecedented move, actually, because we have, we do have some unrated games or unrateable games, however you want to put it, in Australia, and the physical versions are not available, but the Steam version is still up. So, this game is so full of abhorrent phenomena that goes against the standards of morality that they had to pull the Steam version as well. So Maybe Lydia, they just think that people are going to get some kind of god complex. Oh, is I don't this know, their- So, Ludion Studios <laughs> or Ludion, whatever you want to, or however it's pronounced, actually didn't think the PC version was going to be affected. So they yeah, actually exactly. released something to say that it wasn't going to be something along that, that effect, that the PC version wasn't going to be affected. Turns out it is. So yeah, even exactly. they were unaware of the extent uh, that this was going to go. Now, you can still actually buy it from them direct, just not the Steam version. So True. And pla- yes, I did read that. No, so, that is cool. That is cool. Screw you, government. And uh, yeah. anybody oh, who yeah. currently yeah. owns it can still download it from the Steam store. Yes, like re-download. Dan, can you just um, say the name of the developer again, please? Lydian? Ludian? Lydian. There you go. If you go to Lydian or Ladian, Ladian or Lydian? Lud- Ludian. L-U-D-E-O-N Studios. Ladian Studios. If you go- type them into Google, go buy this game from them directly. To be honest, it's one of those things that I feel any publicity is good publicity because I had not heard of RimWorld. Now I want to play it I, I because agree. I got told I couldn't. Exactly. So I hope that's how it goes down because they've got a lot of publicity. I mean, you know, I this isn't a situation I discovered independently, like it has been reported on. So, yeah, I hope for their sake that it's, it's a good thing for them and it upsells for the game. Mm. You know, buying it directly from them is probably going to earn them more money anyway than through a, a third party like Steam or uh, digital games yeah. or something like that. So, yeah, I look, I hope, I hope it works out for them is all I'm saying. Mm. Hmm. Yeah, I agree. Go play RimWorld, everyone. <laughs> that it deserves to be played. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the situation, Dan? Oh, I think that's pretty clear. I think it's bullshit. Doesn't make yeah, mm-hmm. I, the, the the classification stuff. Literally, it makes no sense. Surely, no. this is a bunch of people sitting in an ivory tower that have no clue about what entail what each game entails. These guys are, are on some other drugs. Well, they've probably mm. seen a drug in there and gone, I'm on that right now. This isn't good. Mm. That's this the only thing that makes sense. This is bringing that. attention to my life. Better <laughs> make it not allowed. I, I, don't, I don't get it, and I disagree with it. 
in. <laughs> yes, yeah. I think we're all in a grant on that one. And look, okay, you don't want to bring a physical version out. That's, you know, I, I don't necessarily agree either. But removing it from Steam, it's like a whole nother. Yeah, like saying exactly. it's not, it's a no-go for Australia. Like, okay, there's, there's plenty of games that have said is a no-go, but then having yeah. Steam remove it, unable to activate, and other bits and pieces, yeah. it, it, it's been available for nearly 10 years. Like, are you, are you, that, bit, uh, are you people that brain dead? Like, yep, yep. No, nope, I agree. Usually I'm not into an, an insulting the brain dead like that, but I totally agree. They, <laughs> they don't know what they're a bit out of touch, let's be honest. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I think we're all in agreement that this is a bit crap. Damn and bitch. that's why we are imploring you to go to, Ladian's website and pick it up because surely that's all you can surely do. there's They're a petition as well no. somewhere. Surely there's a petition. I hope yeah. so. Yeah. Yeah. Well, if I'll, I'll actually one, look for that. I'll look for that. I will leave it in the uh, description of this YouTube video. This podcast is available on YouTube as well. Just some low grade gamers. I will leave it in the description there if you would like to sign it. No pressure. Doesn't it doesn't matter. I'm sure again, I'm sure everyone has an opinion on this. But yeah, um if you if you're a parent, just just monitor what your kids are playing anyway. Like, you know, but I think like people should have the ability to choose what game they do and if, do not play, especially once it's up, been available for ten years already. Exactly. Yeah. Like if a exactly. game messes you up to this point, like I'm not trying to be rude here, but if a game if if a game like RimWorld messes you up to that point, there's there's something underlying that you you need to seek help with anyway. So exactly. it's you, you know something like yeah, it's RimWorld is not going yeah. to turn you into or GTA Five oh. is not going to turn you into a mass murderer. It's I games just- don't. Yeah, games don't turn you into anything that wasn't already there already inside, yeah. in my opinion. If a game is going to trigger you to, I don't know, become a serial killer or whatever, something else would have triggered you to become a serial killer or whatever, regardless. Maybe yeah. it would have been a movie. If, if you maybe are a serial killer. Maybe you're just a serial killer to start with. Yeah. And it's yeah. not the game's fault. It's like when things happen and, like, this is kind of random, but like the Columbine shootings. No, and stuff. that's not random. I was thinking of that. And then they just blame Marilyn Manson and the music that they listen to. It's like it's not Marilyn Manson's fault that this person was totally unhinged. Yes, one hundred percent. Yeah, I just wanted to say that I've uh, Laura and I have been. I don't know about you, Dan, but Laura and I have been dealing with this kind of stuff our whole lives because. We were metalheads and or emos back in the day. And my my parents were a little bit concerned at the start when I started wearing, you know, baggy black pants with chains and, you know, wanting to paint my fingernails black and started listening to some pretty heavy, you know, somewhat disturbing music and specifically singing it out loud in the car for shock value. Uh, so, but... It's just a conversation that you have to have with your kid. It's, I liked aggressive music and okay, some of the lyrics are a little bit messed up. Cannibal Corpse, I'm looking at you, which also got banned from Australia, might I add. Cannibal Corpse are not allowed to come here either. Uh, So, uh, and it's something that is not new, is what I'm trying to say. So, have you murdered anyone out of? Out of curiosity. No, no. No one. I don't have any friends. Like, (laughs) you know, I don't even know enough people to murder. God damn. So, yeah, it's just, ah, it it really grinds my gears when something like this happens because me and all my metalhead friends back in the day, like, we're, we're regular functioning members of society, you know, and our morality has not changed because we listened to Hammer Smashed Face by Cannibal Corpse back in the day. And you know what? I'm going to go listen to that after the podcast now because it deserves to be listened to. Like, uh, stop telling me I can't do things because someone else did something that they were going to do anyways. And I, I feel for the 
uh, victims of Columbine, of course, but it wasn't Marilyn Manson's fault. Yeah. It wasn't Slipknot's fault. You can't it, blame anybody else for your own actions. They're like People need to take responsibility for what they're exactly. doing. Plain and exactly. Simple. 100%. 100%. Yeah. Might I just add as well, quickly, RimWorld, it's not even realistic graphic-wise. <laughs> it's not a first person with, you know, amazing character models and realistic looking graphics like it's top down uh, maybe 32 64 bit it looks like stardew valley yeah it's 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 uh, it's the next level above pixel art but it's still that type of vibe yeah what come on man you don't like you don't see a knife get driven into someone like you've seen in resident evils like it's you're not seeing somebody drug someone like you see in GTA. Like, what about Red yeah. Dead Redemption too? Like, mm-hmm. right, The Witcher as well. Like, Elder Scrolls, these- which is a fantastic yeah. game. Yeah, well, literally, <laughs> literally, like, ah, uh, yeah. Again, but they're big. They're big companies who have sway, so they're they're not going to get shot on. They're going to shit on the little guy. Oh, we've gotten worked up, haven't we? I love it. Yep. <laughs> it's nice. Yes. But, I Let's mean, see. I don't know. I'm sure there's someone out there that agrees with this decision because they're worried about little Jimmy having access to these games, and we would all rebuttal with little Jimmy also has access to stuff like Red Dead and Witcher and Skyrim and all these, all these different things. So it's up to you. If you don't want Jimmy playing those type of games, you need to make sure that Jimmy's not playing yeah. those type of games. Learn your parental the government. settings, for God's sakes. Don't, yeah. don't blame the companies. Telling you. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Don't rely on the government to censor things. Like, you need to you need to know what your child is doing. Um, not telling you how to parent. I would probably make a terrible one myself. So, I would tell you. <laughs> but I just wouldn't be worried about little Jimmy. That's all. That's all. I think let's, I think that's a good one. Let's let's shift because I'm getting worked up, and uh, I yeah. think yeah. the next one's <laughs> could, a bit exciting. I think fun. it's exciting. Yes, no, yes, I agree. It is uh, exciting. Let's lighten it up a little yeah, bit. Yeah, let's get them. We could easily yell at each other for the next hour about that one. So yeah, let let's let's move on <laughs> to our next point. Our next point of call here. Uh, God of War, great game. Great series of games. It's been going on for a while now. There is talks of a TV show happening. Interesting. Interesting. So, Dan, I believe you told me that Sony is talking to Amazon. Yes. So there was a report from Deadline saying that Amazon is in uh, later negotiations, if that makes sense with yeah. Sony Pictures on the PlayStation Productions being God of War. So yeah. for those that don't know, God of War is, is about Kratos and he goes through, you know, becoming a god and fatherhood and all those other bits and pieces. And yes. I think the story is fantastic and it would make for a great TV series. But you you have a theory on who the actor is going to be, and I I'm not. I hope Impressed. it's not. <laughs> so otherwise, we're just going to be in jungle after jungle after jungle. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so a couple of weeks to go. There's this um little actor you might have heard of him. He's only like the uh, highest paid actor in the world. Is uh, he? Yeah. yeah dude. Wow. Uh, I think I think Robert Downey Jr. beat him there for a bit with Avengers, but no, he is he is at least the the most popular. Dwayne the Rock Johnson. Dwayne the Rock Johnson has said he is in talks at least. He's interested in. He wants to play a video game character. He's doing another video game movie, uh, which he's done a few of now. Um, so he's you know he's, it's not like he's new to these roles or anything. And he does look like Kratos. I'm, I'm just saying he, look, he looks like a big buff dude. Kratos is bald. 
So, so is the rock. Yeah, but the, the beard <laughs> thing, like, similar, can the rock pull that off? Similar physique. I, I have think, a similar physique. I think, does anybody watch Vikings? I have seen Vikings. I can't say I watch it, but I... I uh, love Vikings. There you go. I reckon either Ragnar Lothbrok or uh, Rolo would be... Yeah, that would be cool. That would, would be, be cool. Yeah, I just think that style of thing suits those two. I mean, they both mm-hmm. need to buff up a little bit, you know, like start hitting the gym. Uh, last name, Nasium. Boom. <laughs> Bad joke. Um, <laughs> I, I, so I, I think one of those two would be epic, especially Ragnar. He's so... Uh, and again, I can't remember the actors' names. I can barely remember musicians I listen to, let alone that. But I think he would just do it so well. I think the Rock's yeah, physique is probably there, but the Rock needs to be white, man. Like, and when Travis, I say white, Travis, I don't mean that in a racist way. But um, Kratos actually has. Uh, actually, I'll ruin it if I say that. Kratos has white on him, as in his body in the original series was white. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to say why, because it will, if you haven't played it, it will ruin a big part as to why he's like that. And I don't mean white as in skin complexion. He's literally like white paint. Yes. yes. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think a good one, has anyone seen the Arrowverse? Uh, Deathstroke from Arrow. The actor's name is Manu Bennett. I think he would make an awesome Kratos. Uh, he's also a Kiwi. So I think that would make our, our Kiwi presenter over here quite happy. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he's just, he's he's a great actor. Uh, and none of us are saying that The Rock isn't a great actor. because He's just so like sometimes when an actor has been in so many things they become like inseparable from some of their roles and okay. sometimes i like sometimes i can't take the rock seriously yes. what role do you can't can't you separate the rock well he's from? done a lot of like comedy stuff and things recently he has been getting into i thought he was really good in the jumanji movies yeah yeah he's yeah he is but they're That's like funny, funny. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, it's this comedy. Is, it's funny. But I can't like picture him in like a serious role without like just like thinking of that. It's like I can never see Harry Potter play in a movie without seeing Harry Potter. I I, think, I still see The Rock as Scorpion King. Anyone remember that? Yeah, no. that's good. That's good. I, I, oh that's yeah, it. sorry, that was terrible. But yeah, I think, <laughs> yeah, I know. I loved it as a kid. I yeah, loved yeah, it. So did I. I just think yeah. The Rock, the problem I have with The Rock is, uh, number one, I do like him as an actor, so I, like, relax yeah. everybody out there. Uh, I think he was, uh, I love the Jumanji movies as well, but he is yeah. very intent on being in a jungle or basically playing a sports star that didn't work out so well and then he has to learn how to be good. Now, let's let's... Branch out then. Let, let him play. Yeah, yeah which, I'm is, sure fine, which is yeah. which is fine. But I think he needs to establish that harder role before he can jump into such an iconic character as Kratos. I just yeah, like he's iconic for us though. But for your regular Amazon Prime viewers, who are what I guess it, this is going to be an Amazon Prime exclusive if Sony is in talks with Amazon. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, is, your, is your average Amazon Prime viewer, do they see Kratos as such as an iconic character? But yeah. where is the, where yeah, is the critics really going iconic. to come from? So where is the initial hype going to come from? The hype is going to come from us. That, like, that's where the hype yes. of God of War is going to come from. So if they, mm-hmm. if they don't get the actor right, and I will point this out, he I'm pretty sure he has a lot of deals with Netflix. So, and, and I think... I think Netflix has roped him into something personally. So I, I personally don't think we'll see The Rock as Kratos because I think I read somewhere that he's, he's got a few deals on the go with Netflix. Not that you can't 
across platform, but I, I got a feeling he's he's tied up. And I sort of hope, like, man, Rolo or Ragnar Lothbrok, like, I really got to learn their names because they're good actors, but, man, Travis, Ragnar would be Travis sweet. Femel. What was that? Travis Femel is Ragnar. Travis yeah. Femel. Trav, good old Trav. <laughs> He's Aussie. Oh, yeah, let's go Trav. All right, yeah, I'm down. Right. Let's go, Trev. Yeah, Trev. Mate, he's, he's sexy he's with that beard. He's too pretty, mate. He's too pretty. Yeah, he can. Nah, you, he does like a really good job at being like really gritty. Yeah. So I don't know. I think speaking of like people you can't separate, he is Ragnar. Well, people, especially if he's playing like a Spartan warrior, I know obviously they're two very different uh, Viking Spartans. But people as aggressive leader, you, you know what? Know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Look, I, I, I think I, I, don't know. I agree, but Sorry, I just think he's got the skill to pull it off. That's what I. I think he's got the skill to pull that off. Serious but. role that. Yeah, yeah. It's a serious role that he's played in um, in Vikings, and that's what I can't separate the rock from. Like a comedy joking sort of a role you'd have like you it's can't very you can't fair, put jokes fair enough. i hope it's the rock i like him i like if, him too if it's not we do have another video game series to look forward to so maybe i hope it's not because then we have then we have two you two know coming. what makes i'm pretty sense. sure that it was specifically sony as well actually so i reckon hmm. the rock is going to be the next kirby Oh, <laughs> that would actually be so good. That That's the awesome. only way they could do a movie like that. Yeah, because yeah. that would be funny. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. And he can suck well, that's people up. Live action Kirby. Live action Kirby. Rock in pink paint. I think that would be honestly hilarious. Yeah. I just want to say, though, before we uh, end on this subject, that there is a The Last of Us series coming out. Uh, which is another PlayStation property, uh, just just as large as the God of War. And that is being released exclusively on HBO Max, which we actually don't have access to here in Australia, unfortunately. I believe a bunch of stuff from HBO does release on Binge, which is the Australian streaming service. Laura, I'm kind of looking at you to confirm this here. So Binge... Binge runs a lot of that stuff because it is owned by Foxtel. So yeah, and Foxtel have exclusive rights with a, a lot of stuff like HBO. So uh, including oh, yeah, okay. the Game of Thrones Thanks series. Thanks a lot. That's, that. that's that you binge, uh, is sort of around, but uh, Binge is crap. Yeah. Uh, I'll, yeah, look, it is crap. We have it for um, stuff like that, like the, the HBO things. Um, yeah, so I just think it's interesting that Sony is now like the last was going to be an HBO exclusive. So it's interesting that they're now in talks with Amazon about an exclusive going over there. I guess they just want to branch out. Um, but yeah, I'm, there, there is some reason, but it's just an interesting thing to note. I am extremely excited for that Last of Us series, by the way. Uh, it was also, Dan, I'm not as familiar with the God of War games as you are. Do you think that the television series is the right route to take? Yeah. Or do you think nah, it would no have been movie. better off as... No movie. movie. No. no? Do, okay. If, Too much if, happening. Okay. If they want to do it right, sort of like... Did you guys see Eternals? The Eternals on Disney Plus? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That shouldn't movies. have been a movie. There are like seven of them happening. or something like that. Like you needed more backstory. Like when somebody died, did you give a shit? No. The God of War series has such a big, robust history that mm -hmm. I think is like there, there is stuff in there that, like, if you don't know about it, there is some really heart wrenching stuff that has happened to him that got him to this point. So he didn't he didn't just become the God of War; he had to become the God of War. So yes. if you tried to skip through that in a movie, they would mess it up, like, horrendously. Like, not on purpose. They're just, that's just what There's would happen. There's not enough 
time. There's just yeah, there's just not enough time unless you want to watch a six hour movie. It, even in parts, I don't think it would be enough to get across the Kratos story. Depending on what they're trying to sell as well, if that makes sense, they could really yeah, no. run. Sony did a fantastic job. Just having God of War, I think, yeah, like it just some of it is absolutely gut wrenching what happens to this guy and he just pushes through and i just don't think you could do that as a movie no fair enough fair enough nice. that's an interesting thought to have because i agree that the last of us is a similar way trying to get joel and ali's relationship across in a two and let's be honest three hour movie I mean, you could do it, but there's just so much there and so much happens in that game to really solidify their relationship. And and do you know what I mean? So yeah. I, I agree with you in that aspect. But on the other hand, I think Uncharted worked really well as a movie, uh, despite it not being based on exactly any of the games. It, it still definitely worked as a movie. There's not so much that happens in those games that, you know, they need to be expanded on in like a six to 10 episode season. So I think Tony is doing a really good job actually with these video game IPs. I think like, I don't know if you guys remember back in the day when we had stuff like uh, the Assassin's Creed movie, we had the Prince of Persia movie, we had... Uh, like those early Mortal Kombat movies, like video game movies. I, I really enjoyed Prince of Persia. I, I just want to add that. There was definitely some problems, definitely a lot of whitewashing in it, but I think I enjoyed it as a movie. Uh, I still do. But they weren't good. They didn't get no. any critical Historically, attention. video game movies have just been yeah. crap, and I think yeah. Sony has exactly. potentially- oh, well, turning point. Yeah, I, I reckon they've learnt from working with Disney, to be honest. Yeah. I, I think I hope so, because video games have such incredible stories and they, like, are some of the best ways to really, like, get invested in mm-hmm. the story and what's happening in it. So if they manage to translate that into a TV show or a movie, I think it has huge potential. I agree. Halo comes out on the 24th of this month. Halo TV yeah. series. So... You know, it's stuff's happening. And I, I yeah, think it's no, really exactly. good for the video game industry. Well, we yeah. finally we finally have reason to think that some of these are gonna be good. Yeah. Uh, the Sonic <laughs> movie was really good. Uh Detective Pikachu was really good. Yeah, it was really good. I think Sonic um, was only good because they took a step back and they listened to feedback. Because that game had a that, that yeah. movie had a significant delay. Because of did. how they did the hedgehog originally, it looked so bad. It looked very interesting. I'm, I'm wrong with so it. glad that the director it. sat back and went, "Yeah, hold hmm. on. this Sonic is ugly." This, yeah, this no, trailer no, did no. not go well. I'm glad they listened to listen to feedback. And that's Why important. wouldn't you just make it look like Sonic? Well, that's what they ended up doing. So, yeah. and I mean, Idris Elba is playing Knuckles in the new Sonic movie. Like that is awesome. Yeah. So excited for that. But yeah, we finally have a precedent to actually expect video game IPs to be good. the The latest Mortal Kombat movie, yeah, well, it wasn't. I liked it. Wasn't great, but it was much better than the previous attempts at it. That's for sure. Yeah. Uh, I liked it. Too. I thought it was, I thought it was very good, but I do understand it. Might not I, be I thought everyone. it needed yeah. a little and, bit. And Uncharted, more. Uncharted was really good too. I really enjoyed it. And I haven't I, seen I, Tom Uncharted Holland yet. there. Tom Holland and Mark Wahlberg, two really big stars in the industry. Uh, Tom Holland is arguably one of the biggest at the moment. So, oh yeah. I mean, they 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 nailed it, man. I thought I thought it was really good. I it will not ruin the game. Any of them, just so you all know. It, that it doesn't do that. No spoilers. No spoilers of any of the games. I was really worried about that, but no, no, it's all good. I am glad that now we have a better, um, like I've got more hope for video game yeah. re renditions. Like, remember what was that? That Monster Hunter movie. Like, oh, I don't want to just like name uh, names, but like. That was so bad. There is no situation where you could be so hungover 
in that would like make that movie good. And I say that because like being hungover and watching a movie, like it's almost like always going to be a good time yeah. because <laughs> you just don't want to do anything. You just want to sit there. Even if a movie is crap, it doesn't matter. Mm. It's still, you're still going to enjoy it. Not this one though. Yeah. We, Laura also says that's because it's literally how she watched the monster hunter movie. She yeah. Was, I had to go down and buy a fried chicken and everything. It was it was funny, but it was still crap. It was still crap. It was the World don't... of Warcraft movie as well. Oh, crap. Uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, there is some recent additions to the video game movies that are average, but they're getting better in general. Yeah, I, I didn't think World of Warcraft was that bad. I it was the ending was pretty. Oh, the ending sucked. Yeah, oh, yeah the ending was no yeah. good. But I thought I thought it was a good introduction movie that they should have done a little bit differently. Yeah. yeah well, sh- don't make a, like, no, I'm not going to spoil it or anything, but don't make an ending expecting there to be a second movie and then just not yeah, yeah. have a second. Yeah. So it just, it, yeah. You have to have it as its own standalone thing first, yeah. don't you? It must end. Yeah. Unless it's being greenlit for a sequel. Already. Movies. They need a beginning. A middle and an end. Three main criteria. It didn't even meet those. It didn't even meet those criteria. Uh, if you want to do something, yeah, I... just tack an advertisement on the end. Like Jesus, learn from learn from uh, Disney and Marvel. That is the biggest TV series that has ever come mm-hmm. to the big screen. Ten years. Of, of movies, and they sold a shitload. You need to... But they all have beginning, middles, and ends, don't they? Yes, that's, yes, the so that's what I'm getting at. Like, in their own right. And I, Standalone. That's, that's why I feel Sony are doing better, though, is because they have been working with Disney. Like, Disney is, yes. is a powerhouse when it comes to oh, stuff yeah. like that. Like, if, if you guys seen the Frozen... If you guys had seen Frozen, the movie... Which is a children's yeah, the movie. First one I have. I've uh, seen the first one. The guy that ends up being the bad guy. It's like no spoilers, but yeah. It's like yeah, what? I know what you meant. What yeah, is going it's, awesome. like, it's real dark. Yeah, Ooh, and I don't this is same frozen. This is Disney. Like, so I, I think Sony have learnt from their exposure to Disney, even like. Yeah, I, I just think Disney are a powerhouse and if people can learn from them. I mean, look at The Mandalorian. Yeah. The Mandalorian is fantastic. I think Boba Fett yeah. redeemed itself at the end because that, uh, yeah. that, was, that was a bit yeah, slow like going. The, but the average. Yeah, but, you know, it redeemed itself at the end, I think. And no, yeah. yeah, Disney's expanding. Well, like Pam and Tommy, there's like a whole 10 minutes where uh, Sebastian Stan, who, plans, who plays Tommy Lee, talks to his genitalia like literally for 10 minutes it's um it's good disney's getting <laughs> they're becoming a bit more mature <laughs> there's nothing wrong with that no it's okay to talk to genitalia look everyone needs a pep talk every now and then i don't know why i'm looking at you <laughs> yeah, I, just for everyone watching this, he's not implying that I talk to my bits all the time. <laughs> I, I actually thought he me. was implying that you give his bits a pep talk. Maybe oh, no. under performance no, issues, I don't know, no judging. <laughs> but pep talks are never a bad thing. Maybe I she was doing them like uplifting, m- motivational speaking or something. <laughs> A motivational quote every day. Yeah, yeah, 100%. I also, okay, all right. That's enough about the genitalia. Uh, on a final note, I just want to wish our female presenter here, Laurie, a happy International Women's Day. Oh, wow, well, thank you. Because it is International Women's Day. And sorry if Dan and I talk over you occasionally. We don't mean to do that. We're just loud, obnoxious men with big opinions and you're Switzerland. I am yeah. Switzerland. Yeah. <laughs> she really is. There's Laura is an integral part of this podcast because uh, I don't know if we would ever have finished our first episode 
To be honest, I think we'd I think still you be. Guys would still be going. Yeah, yeah. Dan either that dark. or yeah, Dan would have actually ended up dead as you threatened. Yeah, I, I may have threatened Dan with death. Or you just both hate each other. Yeah, one of the two. Yeah, we would not no. be friends anymore. No. No, yeah, Laura's holding she, Geneva. You're holding the peace talk. <laughs> 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 I agree. Uh, so, and um, you know, for any other females out there, whether you're in in our industry or any others, uh, thank thank you. I guess thank you, thank yeah. you for that. I'll make sure to tell my genitalia that you pass on your regards next but, time we're having our pep talk. I thought we'd moved on from that, but <laughs> I guess we're going right back there. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Laurie, considering it's International Women's Day, do you want to see us out then? Yeah, sure. Thank you. Thanks for listening to us ramble on again. Sorry if we always, if we sometimes get a little um, heated, but it's just it's a good way to share our opinions. And if you ever want to share your opinions with us, we're also on YouTube with this podcast that has a comment section. And you can let us know what you think. 100%. Absolutely. Cool. Thank you. Well, Dan from iDigital Games, don't forget to head over to iDigitalGames.com for a bunch of discounts. Unfortunately, RimWorld is not available there at the moment, but we will sort that out soon, I'm sure, Dan. Yeah. Beautiful. And we're some kind of gaming, Laura and I. So go check us out on Twitch or YouTube or Instagram if you would like. And yeah, thank you so much. We are some low-grade gamers. Thank you for listening. We will see you next week. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I want you to sing bye too. Goodbye. Goodbye. Good friends. Goodbye. Tomorrow's a brand new day. The moon, the bear, and the big blue house. Anyone? Yeah. Anyone? Yeah. I don't remember the rest. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was beautiful. That was actually way more than I expected. The Bear yeah. of the Big Blue House is a classic. That exceeded my expectations. Thank you.